Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Europe, tasting often rare and exotic whiskeys. This week I'm doing a whole series of Irish whiskey distillers, and today I have the privilege of talking with... Michael Clancy from Lockery Distillery. Excellent, excellent. So we have one uh, Swiss-German guy, Detlef, is watching us here from home office. That's very, very good. Good to see you. Hi now, um, I was supposed to be in Ireland. I was supposed to be visiting the different distilleries, and instead I'm doing it virtually like we do in this crisis that we're in here. Now, Michael, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you and what is your role in this distillery? Okay, so I'm one of the founders of Lockery Distillery. Um, we're a family business, uh, so it's myself, um, and uh, I'm Chief Technical Officer. Uh, it's, a, it's a grand title, but it <laughs> means basically that I'm responsible for our products and our packaging. Um, also in the business is my sister, Sheila, who's our CFO, so she's looks after the money. Mm -hmm. um, and then my brother, Peter, is the CEO, so and, and he would uh, look after it. it Oh, kind of overarching role, but also uh, sales and marketing. Excellent. Kevin, which is also an Irish-German guy, an Irish man who lives in Germany. Good to see you. And here we have Gockel, who is actually a German that loves Ireland so much he'd rather live there. So that's good. Hi, folks. That's yeah. very, very nice. We have a couple of people here. Now, um, the question is, how did you get into whiskey? I mean, your personal story. Were you 16 and went to a party, or what was your introduction to whiskey? Um, I suppose uh, probably my introduction to whiskey was probably hot whiskeys at you know uh, um, at, at at home when you had a cold or whatever in the winter time. Um, but I suppose what what and I would have um, drank whiskey as a as a you know late teenager, early twenties, whatever. Um, what really I suppose awakened my interest in whiskey is when I was around thirty. Um, mm. So I got. A bottle of Redbreast 12 from a good friend of mine for my as a 30th birthday present and in or around the same time um i uh, i bought a book called the lost distilleries of ireland um, oh. which i just happened to see in a bookshop um and they really both of those things really awakened my interest in irish whiskey and i suppose in the 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 the, the history behind it and uh the potential for it in the future as well uh, and particularly, I suppose, Redbreast 12 really opened my eyes to <laughs> single pot still whiskey. I'd never tasted anything like it before. So, um, the normal or the like, cast strength? It was the normal. Um, mm, but it was, okay. but it was, you know, it was good. It was, it was just very different to your standard uh, blended whiskey, which I would have had had before. So that was a, that was a seminal moment for me. <laughs> so Kevin says, the good old hot toddy. Very good. Walter, I would like to say hi to you. Volker, hello. And of course, someone you know, Anna Reike, who's your distributor here in Germany. That's great to see that she's watching as well. Very, very good. Now, um, I actually have here behind me um, <laughs> your logo, more or less. Now, yes. you have a boat on there. Now, tell me about your location. Why are you where you're at with the distillery that is can we say being built, or is it still planning? It's, it's, in, it's, it's, it's no, it's in it's in the early stages of construction. Mm -hmm. So we are um, our location is a very special location. It's number one, it's our hometown. Uh, so that's why we're, we're that's why we're doing it there. But um, number two, it's um, it's right in the very center of Ireland, um, and it's on. Uh, it, we're, we're called Lockery Distillery because we're literally sitting on. The banks of Loch Ree, um, which is the, the the middle lake on the River Shannon, um, so it runs the Shannon runs right down the middle of Ireland, and we're right at the heart of that. So um, it's a it's a um, it, 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 it's a very beautiful area. Uh, I know Marika was there um, this uh, this summer with so us. We have um, Ireland. We can see this little image that is actually shown on the screen as well. You're basically smack dab in the middle here. Absolutely. And at the yeah. very, very top of Loch Reed, we have here the nice little um, bridge, and you have here the nice little city um, called... Um, town, is town of Lanesboro, yep. Yeah. Lanesboro, yeah. and if we go, we actually see here the bridge, which you mentioned a moment ago, and I'll talk about this as well, yeah. which we can see here on the bottles that down that, below that actually yeah. represents that bridge, which I didn't that, know. That picture right. that just came up there doesn't <laughs> doesn't look like our. It's not it's not a, a picture from our area. But no, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry about yeah. that. I could. Uh, Google did what it wanted to. Google so. did. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I suppose the the um the interesting thing about that bridge, the first bridge was built there in 
1000 AD. So it's been a very strategic crossing point on the Shannon mm-hmm. um, for, for all those years. Um, and there's a lot of history in the area. But also, it's a very beautiful area. Um, mm-hmm. So we're surrounded, not only we, we not only have the river on our, on our um, doorstep, but also we're surrounded by native woodlands and peat bogs. So again, these are very um, important natural features in the area. So the, the whole area right down the center of Ireland has been designated um, Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. Okay. Um, so a number of you may have heard of the, the Wild Atlantic Way. Um, mm-hmm. sure. the, the Hidden Heartlands is a, is a kind of a tourism grouping like that. And we're very much at the core of all that. Uh, so um, the other interesting thing um, is that we are um, uh, we're very close to the Royal Canal. Um, so the Royal Canal runs from Dublin all the way to the Shannon. So within the next year, you will be able to get on a bike in Dublin and walk off-road all the way to Lanesborough. Which oh, is very interesting. Very, very interesting. And it will open up the area to a lot of, of different tourists that we you know we wouldn't have been seeing in the area before. We're also just very close to the center parks, um, about fifteen miles away from us as well. So um, Ireland's only centre parks. So okay. Okay. um so in terms of our site, um uh, we we have a Georgian building on the site, an old Georgian building dating from eighteen oh three. This will become our visitor center. Um but all our production area will be housed in new buildings, which we're constructing out to the rear of the old property. And then at the at the at the end of the site, we have an exclusive tasting room, uh, which overlooks the lake. Um, so that's mm-hmm. going to be something really, really special. Um, and the the distillery, I suppose itself, will be a, a fusion of old and new elements. Um, and that's kind of like what we're doing as a company. So we're a modern, pro- progressive Irish company. Um, and we're not looking to kind of sell anyone else's history. We're, we're planning to make our own. Um, That's great. Um, so our vision from day one has been to uh, to bring to the world from our hometown in Lanesborough the finest, most highly regarded Irish spirits. Um, so... That's that, that that's what we've been driving for. Um, so in it's worth mentioning, I suppose, as well at this stage, um, we're not just in planning. We we are a distillery currently, albeit in a small way. So mm. we we established our micro distillery in a temporary premises in the town in uh, summer 2018. Uh, and and you can now see the, the pot still that you are. The, Absolutely, the, the, yes. The, that's still you're yeah. using at the moment. Yeah. So it's a 150 liter schnapp style still, uh, very good for aroma. Um, so we're, we're uh, distilling our slingshot, distilled Irish gin, and our zesty citrus vodka on that currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that that micro distillery will relocate over to the new site when it's complete. So, uh, you had up J- Jason there. You had up the image of the the main site just a second I ago. Go back. I wanted to go yeah. for a better image, but I'll try to. I'll show that again. Yes, no problem. Yeah. Here we go. So I'll just, there you go. Uh, uh, yes. So you can see there without the, if you just ignore the text. The, Unfortunately, the, the, I was looking for one yeah. without the text. I have someone somewhere, yeah. <laughs> so the building at the, uh, the uh, at, to the left of the image is the three-story Georgian building. Um, and then it comes down and we're into the the, the, the kind of long building there is the, um, is, the dis, is the whiskey distillery. Then we have the micro distillery. I have a better picture one second. Ah, okay. So here we go. There you go. Super, yeah. So the building at the front, uh, to the left of the picture, is the the, the, the visitor center. Then the the long building with the black roof um, and the big window facing out on the on the on the street is uh, the whiskey distillery. So those big window, that big window facing out onto the street, uh, inside that will be our three pot stills, mm-hmm. um, the largest of which is seven thousand liters. So it's a it's a significant size distillery. Um, Similar, I suppose, in size to Clonakilty Distillery in Ireland would be the the, the, the closest to it. Um, and where exactly will you get your pot stills from? Uh, so our pot stills are coming from uh, Barrison in Italy. Um, Italy. Mm-hmm. So they're 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 already on order there. They're they're part manufactured at this stage. All right. Very very uh, nice. So um, then, just worth mentioning. So the next areas down there are are bottling, packaging, cast filling, etc. Then this building at the, on the the bottom of the site or to the right of the picture, we have this. It's it's uh, noted there as the library at Lockree. So mm-hmm. that is our exclusive tasting room, 
Um, and just in the bottom right hand side of that window you can see there is that's actually a person so it just gives an idea of the scale of the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. the window mm -hmm. so you're going to be looking out um from there over over the lake and then below that uh, we will have cask storage uh, directly below that and that is for uh casks for people who've who've bought a cask uh with us their their casks will be stored in that location so which i might actually do let's see <laughs> super yeah that'll be good we'd love to have you so that will be a, a case where you could come uh have a look at your cask maybe take a sample and then come and spend some time in the the, the library upstairs um, and, and and relax and enjoy the view very good what is the what's the price of a cask at the moment for you do you have a system a program set up yes we do so uh our cask is uh there's six and a half thousand euros Mm -hmm. uh, is the the, the the start starting uh offer then uh we have another offering which is eight thousand euros and then we have another offering which is uh um forty eight thousand uh which is basically where you're buying four casks i was gonna say your, one cask. you're buying, <laughs> yeah so you're buying you're buying a full um you're buying a full batch yeah. um and basically uh you can you can choose the mash bill you can choose whether it's um you know what the length of fermentation is you can you can influence what the product is uh you can then choose what kind of cask go, goes into so you know do you want to put it into a couple of sherry butts do you want to put it into uh four different casks it's up to you All right, um, very, very so there's good. a lot when of will you actually finish with the um the building construction and when does the spirit start flowing Okay, so the plan is that we will be, uh, I suppose that we will be up and running uh, in in early 2021. Mm -hmm. um, like many of these projects, it takes a little bit longer than um, intended, but uh, I suppose it's a long game um, and whiskey is a long game business. And, and uh, so uh, we're, we're in it for the long haul. So we'll, we, we'll get there. There's been various obstacles and, and, and twists and turns along the way, but we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're getting closer all the time. All right, very good. You had your epiphany with the um, Redbreast 12. Now, what caused you as a family to start a distillery? That's not the normal thing to do in your in your life, is it? Um, no, I suppose not. It's um, uh, what causes... I, I, I suppose we always had an interest in it. Um, and, um, you know, as, 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 as a family, we always had an interest in distilling. Um, oh and uh, or an interest in whiskey and an interest in distilling and an interest in the, the, the history and background to it so um basically um it, it the, the the project nucleated over the course of a, a, a dinner um where we were discussing uh the the resurgence of irish whiskey and we also we had a property in the the, the town which was owned by our family mm -hmm. uh, and we were looking at you know opportunities to do things with with that property so we decided we'd look into the feasibility of uh, starting a whiskey distillery in Lanesborough. Um, and I suppose that was the nucleus of the project. So that was a number of years ago. Um, and it's, like I said, it's it's taken various twists and turns along the way. Um, but um, we, we're at the point where we, where, where we are now. We, we, we are an operating distillery, but um, looking forward to transitioning to being a, a a fully fledged whiskey distillery in the, the near future. All right. You say you're a distillery, so now is your time to plug your two other pro products, please. Okay. So <laughs> we currently have, um, and we'll talk about a whiskey later, but we currently have um, two other products. So the first one is uh, called Slingshot Distilled Irish Gin. Um, so this is the product. It's um, it's quite interesting, and it might interest a lot of the, the whiskey fans because this is the only distilled spirit in the world with peat in it. Um, and I suppose the, the, the reason for that is um, I mentioned at the start that um, the area is surrounded by peat bogs. Um, so it's it's the most endemic local botanical that we have. Um, and it was something that uh, when we started to develop our gin and started to, to, um, uh, to, to get into the, the, the process of selecting botanicals, we played around with all sorts of things, and one of them was got a peat. lot of metals here. Congratulations! Yes, uh, there's forty-one point seven percent ABV. Very nice, and about forty-four euros. Wow. 
yes uh and, and online with uh irish whiskies in germany it's it's it comes in cheaper than that um because <laughs> different excise rates in germany so yeah. i know uh irish whiskey irish hyphen whiskies uh and, and marika will look after you very well yeah. um so we also then but, so the, the, no 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 wait a second the gin yes. with peat now tell me where did the peat come from so the peat is from uh it's, it's from our area it's from um uh just within the the locality so mm -hmm. people still uh harvest peat and, and and burn it and use it in their fires mm -hmm. so that's where basically we get it and uh, now we're not harvesting any additional peat for that we're just using small bits that are kind of left to one side after and did you uh, mulch your own grains or what type of grains are do you use for your vodka oh no so the or vodka that gin, we, i'm sorry the, sorry, sorry gin, my sorry, mistake yes, I, gin, well <laughs> When, when you make gin, you must start with a neutral spirit. Yep. Uh, whether you distill that yourself from scratch or whether you um, buy it in. So we're currently, we buy that in and okay. the plan is that we will. We, oh, your botanical we, is a is a peat. Yes. So the botanical ah, is peat. Yes. I understand the so, system now. Very interesting. Yeah. Cool. So making gin, you start with neutral spirit. Mm -hmm. Then you redistill that in the presence of botanicals. Yeah. And typically, if, you're, if it's gin, you have to have juniper in there. Yeah. And, people will usually have coriander and uh, angelica and various other botanicals and then after that it's kind of whatever you want yourself and um, so uh, i see a comment there vodka with peat by another distillery so mm -hmm. that was vodka that went into a peated cask or sorry yeah. vodka that was uh, that was used peated malt so that mm -hmm. was like a peated whiskey turn or peated new make turned into yeah. a vodka and um, so what we've done is, is different. So we've actually infused the neutral spirit with peat and mm -hmm. then distilled it. Yeah. So what that does, so it's it's quite different to a peated whiskey because you're not, it's not the smoke you're getting. What you're actually getting is the, the, the essence of the botanical itself or the essence of the peat itself. So what that brings into the spirit is um, you get an earthiness, um, which is... Um, you know very very interesting mm -hmm. you get a slight sweetness which is quite unusual but if you think of what uh the, the the peat around our area a lot of it has come from what were oak forests oh. so if you t i like to think of if you think of oak often brings a sweetness into whiskey yeah. uh maybe that's maybe that's a correlation there i don't know but it does bring a slight sweetness uh into the the, the distillate and um it gives a beautiful mouthfeel as well. So really, mm -hmm. really amazing mouthfeel to the to the distillate, which is, you know, these things you don't know until you actually try them. But when we distilled it, we went, wow, this is something we <laughs> absolutely have to integrate into the product. And it gives us something that's very, very distinctive. Um, the other things that we have in there, so we, we make four separate distillates, which okay. we blend together. Mm -hmm. So that the, um, because it's gin, obviously we have, we've got to have juniper in the book. So we do a classic gin distillate which has got juniper, angelica, coriander, cardamom, lemon balm, celery seed, and orris root. Mm -hmm. um, then we do a distillate, which is fresh mint. And again, this is inspired by the area. So all along the shores of the lake of Loch Ree, uh, fresh mint grows wild. So that was something that we okay. wanted when we were inspired to use. So now we're not picking it by the lake. We're, 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 we're buying and using mint that has grown for us, but it's all, it's all grown in Ireland. Um, and uh, but we use the whole fresh mint, and it's it's really gives a really beautiful uh, mint freshness to the gin, mm -hmm. uh, and you'll particularly pick that up on the finish. Um, and then the other thing that we use is uh, we use fresh and organic um, citrus. So we mm -hmm. use lemon, lime, orange, and pink grapefruit, and we use the whole fruit of those. So it gives a lovely citrus flavor, but also a, a, a real fruitiness, and, and again some sweetness from the citrus. So we we distill those separately, blend them together, and that's what makes our final gin. So it's quite distinctive and you know, it's it's a little bit more involved the way we produce it, but it produces a top quality gin. And I suppose the the um eight international awards that we've won for it uh, are, are are um testament to that. All so, right, very good. And you have something so, else as well, don't you? Yes. So we have another product which is I mentioned and I mentioned the, the citrus that we distill. So the fresh organic citrus. So um, a lot of people were commenting on that. We, we we will typically demonstrate the four different distillates in the gin when we do uh, tastings with people. And a lot of people kind of really, really like the citrus. So we decided that we'd bring that out on its own as a citrus vodka. So um, so 
this is a we call it zesty citrus vodka so it's got the the fresh organic oranges pink grapefruit lemons and limes uh, and with a, with uh, our irish spirit in it so the, the spirit that we use as well the, the neutral spirit that we use is a is a irish whey spirit which mm-hmm. comes from a dairy company and uh, so again that gives a beautiful mouthfeel to both the gin and the the, the citrus vodka right. both of these both of these are online with um the celtic whiskey shop or via our own website and mm-hmm. um, are also um on irish whiskies dot dot de right. um Worth mentioning as well, we launched this in October and uh, we launched it on a Saturday and then four days later it won Best Irish Vodka at the Irish Whiskey Awards. So we're very proud of that too. Yeah. What so. are your expansion plans? You have Germany, you have UK and you basically have then um, Ireland. Will you expand to the whole world? Um, yes, within reason. Uh, again, we're a small company so bandwidth is, a, is an issue. Um, but uh, yeah, in, 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 you know, in time, uh, we will expand to kind of the, the key markets for uh, spirits and Irish products, but we're you know we're not uh, we're not we're not competing against the big guys in terms of um, volume products. That's not our that's not our game. We can't we can't be in that game. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah. All right. Very very good. So let's go to the real thing that I like. Yep. Whiskey. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So what do we have here? These are two interesting bottles that I actually purchased over here. Um, yep. From Marika from www.irish-whiskies with an S, dot D-E. And so you also have them on your website. So I'm sure they're at Celtic Whiskey. Um, Celtic shop Whiskey as well. Shop as well, yes. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, yeah, so I'll talk through maybe just in, in general. The, mm-hmm. the a little bit about the, the the kind of idea behind this range of whiskies um and then we'll get into the specifics of of the individual ones so right. this is the um so it's called the bridge um uh <laughs> so basically um the and it's worth mentioning so the the oh, by the, the way congratulations the kevin says your knowledge is phenomenal thank you kevin thank you um, <laughs> so our our um our the bridge in Lanesborough, which we, I think you had an image up there a while ago, we've actually represented that on the label here, and that's I suppose was the primary inspiration for calling this the bridge. But also then when we started thinking about it, the whole idea of this is this is a bridge to the point where we have our own whiskey that we've distilled ourselves. So it's a statement of I suppose transparency mm-hmm. in that we're not ashamed to state that yes we've sourced this whiskey from elsewhere, and um, we sourced. Um, from uh, other distilleries, and again, by the, the the age of the whiskey, you'll you won't have to guess too hard which which <laughs> distilleries it has come from. Um, but uh, we have we've bought a range of different barrels uh, that we have maturing uh, currently, and the idea is that these will be released as a series of steps, uh, I suppose, steps across a bridge to the point where we have our own whiskey, um, right. and there will be a series of different releases. So the the um, if you look at the label there, they, they, this first one is called Too Small. Sorry, yeah. So I can help. Yeah, Too Small. Mm-hmm. So again, this was a limited edition, uh, 106, uh, sorry, 465 bottles in this one. I was going to say, I have 465 yeah. in my bottle, yes. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, you know, the, the whole idea of this series is with, it will be a single cask or limited release edition. So when we say limited release, this won't be a limited release of six thousand bottles. This will be a limited <laughs> release of, you know, maximum one thousand, one thousand five hundred. When we say limited release, that's what it is. It's not going to be a limited release of six thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand bottles. Uh, limited in our case means limited. Um, so they're, they're, I suppose they're, they're, you know, they will become a, a collector's item in the future as well. But they're, they're very good for drinking as well. So. Um, <laughs> Yes. So both so of the my first... bottles are open, so yes. all right, no collector <laughs> items here, unfortunately. Yeah. So the first one, just to mention, so the first one is called Too Small, mm-hmm. um, and Too Small uh, is based on an, on an old Irish sta- saying. So Too Small, Latin Hebra. So a good start mm-hmm. is half the work. Um, okay. So that's what we've called this one, Too Small. So we're very, and uh, I suppose we're we're very happy with how this has been received um, in the in the market and. By people who know their whiskey, so um, 
And I see Tina. Tina was uh, lucky to get her hands on some two spot in at Whiskey Live in Dublin, and it was great to meet you there, Tina. Um, yeah. So just to, to to state about this one, so it's quite an unusual whiskey. So um, this one was uh, it's a single grain Irish whiskey, um, and this one was eight years in bourbon cask when we got got our hands on it. So then it we can't be great Northern because they started five years ago. So. No, so this mm. was this was this was Cooley whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah. So um, this was eight years in bourbon cask, and then we 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 got our hands on it and we transferred it into a red wine cask from a winery called Anima Negra in Mallorca, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was it, it it spent eighteen months in the in the finishing cask from Anima Negra, so. Um, uh, that that um, I, I suppose how to describe it and people um, describe this one. Um, one of the ways somebody described it, we 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 talked about it as being like a almost like a Pinot Noir of whiskey. So mm -hmm. it's it's not um, it's not a knock you over the head uh, with the, the 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 finishing cask flavor type of whiskey. Um, it's very subtle but very elegant, and there's a huge amount going on in there. Um, so uh, what I would get from it is um, I would pick up um, candied fruits, freshly made custard, toffee mm -hmm. on the nose, mm -hmm. um, then uh, dark fruits, dark chocolate, um, more toffee on the palate, mm -hmm. um, and then a dried fruit finish. And that goes on and on and on. It goes on mm -hmm. for a long time. So it, it's a really lovely, lovely whiskey. Uh, and we're very proud of it. So we're you know, we're very happy with that. So that was that was the non chilled filtered is important to mention here, as well as natural color. Um, yes. You can actually see the differences in color here between the two of them. Um, yeah, that's actually so that's the very two spot on the yeah. right there as I look at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So very the two nice. spot again, it's, it's yeah, it's quite an unusual color for whiskey, Some, but it's it's all natural color. It's got a little bit of like a peach color, I would say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> somebody, somebody has even said like a almost like a rose wine in, in yeah. some ways. So, yeah, so. That's again from the the red wine cast, so it's quite distinctive. Um, so uh, the next one then is uh, is called Ondara, and Ondara in Irish means the second. So we're, <laughs> very original, very good. Yes. So. <laughs> so we're going to have to start coming up with more authentic or more original names, and we will do mm -hmm. in time. But um, but uh, I suppose these were um, what we what, what we put out for these two. So Ondara is um, probably a bit more. Um, familiar tasting to other uh, to, to people who are familiar with with uh, Irish whiskies and with sherried whiskies in particular so this was again this was similar uh, whiskey to the other one and um, so it was a uh, single grain uh, Irish whiskey so it was eight years of bourbon cask when we got it and then it was transferred into a Oloroso sherry cask um, now, now tell me, there's a hundred and I have 94. How big was your sherry cask? Usually yes. they're much larger. <laughs> so this is a remade sherry cask. So it was remade down to 125 liters. So ah. hence the small number of bottles. <laughs> but it's also, I suppose it's picked up and you've tasted it. It's picked up mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot of the classic sherry flavors. Yep. Um, it's it's and it's it's ready. It's very much ready at this <laughs> yeah. stage. I, I, I don't think I'd have wanted to give it any more of the the, the the sherry cask um but again a very beautiful whiskey um so what i would get from that is i would get um again vanilla dried fruits on the nose um opening up then on the, the taste to more um classic oloroso dried fruits uh some roasted nuts in there uh, and then a real warming um oak and spike spicy oak finish uh, and again, that goes on and on and on. It continues on for a long time. So, so in again, Ireland, this one was the um, uh, was eighty five euros, and this is ninety euros with the Orlozo. Um Yes. Basically, due to the cask, or why? Why the price difference? Um, just there, there, there's less of the um, less of the Oloroso one. So okay. that was the, yeah, yeah. the the main main reason for it. So it's a slightly more limited edition. Um, yeah, okay. and, mm -hmm. and, and just uh, we felt it, it commanded slightly slightly higher um, <laughs> i mean just minimal so, it was like yeah. five come on i mean if you're gonna do that all right why not good yeah good. Mm -hmm. so um 
Uh, I do again. like, I must admit, you have an, on each and every one, you have a little dog tag, is what I call it. And you yes. have a nice little storybook here, and it's very, very well done. It really has the feeling here of a quality product. Um, I just love the bridge, and I just um, constantly love your the guys in the boat. Now, these two guys behind me, who are they? Are you, is one of them you? <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, uh, there was a lot, there's been a lot of talk about that. So, um, <laughs> There were there were people uh, kind of asking, is that you and your brother in the boat? Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, where would our sister be? <laughs> so yes, exactly. We tried, right. we tried finding a boat with three people in it. It didn't just quite work. So they're they're two two fishermen out on the lake. I suppose is the, the best way of describing it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's worth noting though, um, Lanesboro is renowned for as being a fishing area. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had a lot of, of of international fishermen come to visit us. Um, we are renowned for um, for as being a pike fishing area, um, mm, okay. so and we and we host international fishing championships in Lanesboro. So, if any of you are uh, any of the listeners out there are uh, are fisher fisher people, um, <laughs> maybe they might might want to look up Lanesboro because there's some fast fantastic competitions that take place um, in Lanesboro. So, yeah, just to mention, you know, the the um, the little tag here. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Even Mar yeah. Martina said that maybe we can have a rental boat when yes, we stay absolutely. there in the river. Yeah. It's actually one of those great things to do. Yeah. All right, tell me more about the tag, please. Yeah, Sorry. so just, you know, these are all individually tied. Um, just even, uh, just to, to, to note as well, the, so the, the lid of the bottle, um, we've got a, yeah, so we've got a little, um, you know, our, our own thing, and we, We've we've marked those ourselves into the series. So again, it it's just part the, of it's a branded like it's like branded, tackle, yeah, isn't yeah, it? it's branded, yeah, branded by hand. So wow. again, just you know, it's all part. Of, I suppose it's you know, it's these are these these don't affect the whiskey in the bottle, but they're all little touches that I suppose mm -hmm. uh, it, give it give it a further kind of interaction for the the customer. Um, now tell me, why did you choose the classic wine bottle design and not more of the the smaller um, type of bottle? Let's just think. Um, I don't know whatever you have you know what i'm talking about right <laughs> yeah so um it, it's actually what this bottle is it's actually a high-end cognac or armagnac oh, bottle okay. mm -hmm. uh, and we chose it purposely so uh hi daniela how are you doing <laughs> um, She's great yeah so the, the couple of reasons why we chose this so the first of all is um we wanted something that was elegant looking and, and, yes. and tall and distinctive and stood out from the from very the much stuff. so. Well done, yeah. well done. So, so it does. It, you know, it, it stands out like that. Also, th this bottle, if you look at it, it's got a really deep punt. Um, yeah. this, this this bit here, which is called a punt. So, there's there's a couple of things about that. So, first of all, visually, it's it's very attractive, uh, and particularly when you put whiskey in the bottle, um, and when you when you get light on it, it's 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 super. Uh, I suppose prop um for to, to, to highlight the color of the whiskey mm -hmm. and to highlight the the um, you know just to, to make the bottle stand out um, but also then if you think of uh, wine um, this the, the deep punt is a kind of a perceived quality um, thing in wine so kind of a yeah. you know so that, that was the kind of reference for it mm -hmm. um, so that was, the, that was I suppose that was the reason behind choosing the bottle um, mm -hmm. and the other thing just to note on it as well is um, you know, we wanted people to be really able to see the whiskey and see the different colors of the whiskey. So, hence, there's a lot of whiskey visible, <laughs> and not a lot of you know, not not a massive transparency. Amount of I like it. Yes, <laughs> literally. Yeah. but it's 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 to allow people to see the the color of the whiskey, uh, and when you have when you start collecting the full set and <laughs> um, have these in your in your in your house with maybe some light behind them, there'll be a beautiful. Um, a, a beautiful thing to 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 have. Now you so just mentioned the, the word set, so these are not the only two that are going to come out. Tell me more. No, so there's a range of these over over a period of you know a number of years uh, between now and and the point when our own whiskey is ready um, to, to to come out. Um, so we've got um, we've we have uh, malt grain pot still whiskey over a range of years dating back to 2001 is the oldest whiskey we've got um so all of the stock we've got is all triple distilled um mm -hmm. and it's from one of the existing distilleries on the island um but there we have stuff from from different distilleries um currently um our strategy is uh, not to release blended whiskey 
as part of this series but who knows that may change in the future but but our, the, the the strategy is to release these as single grains single malts single pot stills uh so we've got um uh so what we've got we've we've recasted into uh some very interesting casks um some very unusual casks uh so you know we've got some our hands on some very old uh, X wine casks uh, or X uh, sherry casks, which you know uh, will be very interesting um, at the end of the maturation period. So they're currently uh, going through um, finishing at the moment, um, and uh, you know we will release those uh, periodically, but very much as they are ready. So we're not in a not in a mad rush to, to bring them out. Um, we'll just bring them out when as and when they're ready. All right, very, very good. So my Marika is the salesperson that we all know and love. And so both bottles are still available here at irishmineswhiskies.de. And of course, the Slingshot Gin and the Zesty Vodka as well. So I put that actually on TV, um, yes. YouTube, so we can actually have the link and get that there. Um, Celtic Whiskey Shop, for those of you in the UK or in Ireland, they also sell, send worldwide. So you, if you need yep. that, you can actually or, or, contact or, them. Or via our own website, so www.lrd.ie. But absolutely, maybe your, go, maybe your postage support. rates are less than if Celtic you're, whiskey if, shop. <laughs> if you're if you're if you're if you're um, if you're if you're buying from Germany, absolutely buy through Marika because they the the excise um, rum casks uh, don't have any yet. But um, never say never. Um, <laughs> but we 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 do have some other interesting things. I, I, I suppose I'm not going to. Uh, divulge i'm not going to give away our our our, 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 our secrets at, at the right. moment very good so um, you will finish building 2021 hopefully which yes. means 22 23 24 before you can actually release release your own juice so we have another four years of about waiting time right yes but we'll keep you entertained during that time with um with the series um of of of, of, of these whiskies and i suppose that's the idea is that we will um we will have whiskey for our customers to, to to purchase um to over the course of a number of years all right um, do you have a master distiller already on um set up for the future uh not as of yet uh, mm -hmm. and again i think um you know there's uh you know really you have to uh grow into it yourselves mm -hmm. and you have to you have to um develop your own um expertise on site we do have access to a lot of experts so Ali from the Celtic Whiskey Shop is on our as, is a, is on our board as part of our team. Okay. Uh, we have another gentleman called Alan Wilsonholm, um, who was um, operations director for um, William Grants in Scotland. So he mm -hmm. ran uh, Glenfiddich, Balvenie, Caninvi, um, and their, their 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 grain plants as well. Um, oh, well Grant has a massive footprint in Ireland now, don't they? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but Alan is one of those guys. He's a very, very knowledgeable guy, um, and you know he's our he's our sounding board for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth mentioning as well. Um, within the Irish whiskey fabric, there are there is a great support structure for new distilleries uh, through the the Irish Whiskey Association. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a mentoring program where basically guys like us can access um, expertise. Uh, and can bounce out, bounce things off existing distilleries. So, like the guys in Irish Distillers, uh, like the people like David Quinn and, and and people like that are available. Obviously, they're not going to come up and distill for us, <laughs> but they're available if you, if you have pay them enough. I'm sure they'll <laughs> they take their holiday and maybe help a little bit. Who knows? Yeah. Will I see you in Dublin again with the um, Whiskey Live 2020? Absolutely, we should be there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our that, that that's our plan at this stage. So. Fingers crossed we'll all uh, be able to be out enjoying ourselves again <laughs> soon and um, that, that, you know, that, that, that things like Whiskey Live will, will, will come again. Um, also, I suppose, um, you know, we had a number of things lined up in Germany, which, uh, which, which we had to cancel. Um, we were supposed to be at ProWine. We were supposed to be doing some, some events with, with Marika in, in Germany uh, yeah. just before ProWine and some other um, things just afterwards. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to Sorry. hopefully getting out later this year and, and attending some events in Germany and, and uh, meeting and greeting the people over there as well. 
So according to my calculations, it's going to be a very, very busy fall with all the things planned and all the things being then um, done that were canceled. So well, well said. <clears throat> yeah. We'll have to see there. Very good, very good. So where else can we find you? Where are you out and about? And where else can there be any type of interaction with you or the distillery? Um, so the other thing I just, uh, I suppose I hadn't mentioned it earlier was, and again, we're not out and about at the moment because we're, we, we're, not, we're not allowed to be. But uh, the other thing worth mentioning is that we have um, opened a gin school in Dublin. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in a place called Churchtown in Dublin, we have a gin school, which is called the Slingshot Gin School, where people can come along and, and uh, distill their own bottle of gin. So that's on, uh, it, it has its own um, uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and stuff like that. So Slingshot Gin School, if you look that up. You get booking, or you get a link to it from our website, which is www.lrd.ie. So, if, right. if any of you are coming to visit Ireland, we'll uh, we'd love to see you there as well. Uh, again, currently closed, but uh, we will be back open as soon as uh, this crisis is over. Exactly. Very good. So, um, even here, um, fingers crossed for all of us, Kai from just my neighboring town actually wrote he's more of a German whiskey expert, but it's good to okay. see him there. Yeah. All right, very, very good. So um, anything else we should talk about or should we wind yeah. it up slowly but surely? What else? Is um, I think just the only, the only, I suppose, thing that I would like to say just to kind of close out is that, you know, like every other business and particularly small businesses, um, you know, we're dealing with the fallout of the, the, this coronavirus crisis. Um, so, you know, to the customers out there, potential customers out there, um, you know, supporting small producers like us is, you know, is, is important. Um, but also you're supporting the, the retailers who sell us. So the people like uh, Marika, like Celtic Whiskey, they're small businesses as well and they employ people. So, um, you know, if you can see your way to uh, going online and buying some products, uh, it, would, it would help not just us, but it would also help the retailers as well. Um, even if it's just vouchers at the moment that other people can redeem later on, even that helps. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, and you know, again, there there's hospitality outlets and stuff like that. So bars and restaurants and stuff. Those guys, um, they need your support as well. So if you can buy vouchers or whatever for them, uh, it, it would help everybody. Um, so, uh, you know, I suppose just to, to to say, you know, we will get through this crisis. Um, we will come out the other side as hopefully better people. Um, and, you know, we do look forward to meeting our friends in Germany uh, later in the year. And just finally, as was to, to, to say from my point of view, so the, the Irish toast when drinking is slancha, uh, and that means good health. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so never was it more important to wish this to each other. So when you are drinking, when you are, whether, whether you're drinking on your own or whether you're, um, you know, doing it online, talking to somebody, so, you know, raise a glass and, and say slancha uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's important uh, to wish that to each other. So, um, and I see Jason is, <laughs> is joining Preparing us here. Preparing to this. do this, to at least well, yeah. a tiny little um, sip here to actually end our wonderful stream together. Thank you very much, Michael, for this very, very interesting as well as informative um, time together. Now, www.lrd.ie, i.e. is for Ireland. And of course, you can go to the spirits and go to the whiskey. You can take a look at his vodka, his gin. And I'm very, very excited about what will happen. My rule of thumb is I buy barrels from distilleries that I actually are producing. <laughs> I have a couple okay. of other people in front of you. As soon as that liquid flows, I'm going to be on that cast program and say, give me a barrel. Good stuff, um, that's one of the things I want to do. And so you'll probably be tearing from me at least at the latest in 2021. I have four different casks at the moment, another four I'm looking at buying this year. And then next very year, good. you're going to be probably at the top of the list for what I want. And so okay, even that super. would be very, very interesting to see what happens there. Roy says, thanks, guys. Also, Thanks. from my um, point of view, Slancha, um, Slancha yeah. and all the best in the future. All right. Okay. Thank you, Slancha. Slancha to everyone out there. Bye.